Now, if you've been paying attention, when I started off, I said, if you've been paying attention to prophetic voices that have, can be uh, really, you know, are of the Lord, this is coming up from every angle that we are the last generation. Now, just think about that for a minute. We are the last generation. There is not another generation to come. I want, to, I want you to think about it a minute. There's not another generation. We're the last generation for the return of the Lord. We are the last. And you have to really think it through until it really hits you. We're the last generation. And he said, these instructions were written for the last generation. And examples were given for paths for you not to go that way. In other words, those in the past went certain directions and they missed the mark. So I'm giving you some examples, he's saying, don't go that way, don't miss the mark. And he told you what, what kind of things would make you miss the mark. Now stay with me, you'll get it here, you'll get it. Therefore, verse 12, therefore, let him who thinks he stands Take heed that he does not fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. I don't know about you, but before I gave my life totally to the Lord, I, I thought I couldn't help the messes I got in. The only way that I could ever get out of the traps or ever get beyond it was that I had to get beyond me. And I had to quit trying and let the Lord have me and let Him get me out. Until you die to self. Amen. Now, let, let, let me tell you what I'm, I, I don't, I, some, sometimes you make that too hard. So you go around and you go some kind of stupid way, religious way, okay. to try to die to self. Okay. And so then you, women says, okay, I think I won't, I'm not going to wear my makeup anymore. I'm not going to, oh, please put it on, dear God, do whatever you can do. <laughs> I mean, do anything you can, please, Lord Jesus. We got to look at you, Lord Jesus. Oh, well. I ain't no need for you guys to get too excited. <laughs> Y'all need some help, too. <laughs> I'm talking about getting to the place that where you realize that Jesus literally becomes all you need. <laughs> he is enough. He is sufficient. He's going to get you out of this. When he becomes your everything, your everything, don't act like mere men. You're the end of the ages. Now go back to chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Our position Talking about the church now. I'm talking about us. Our position is identical to the position that uh, the Israelites were in. It's not any difference. We run in parallel to where they were. That's why they're an example. And in one, one chapter, Jesus said it twice. This is written as an example. When he says the same thing over again, you need to be listening. So we are parallel. We're parallel. Okay, you go to chapter 9. 
we are just as capable of messing up as they did. Chapter 9, let's pick up in verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Y'all, there's something to be won here. Now listen closely to me. I'm going to tell you something this morning. There's something to be won. And the Lord is saying, run to win. Run to win. Don't just race because you like to race. No. Win this thing. Win this thing. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. That's the biggest problem we have. We're out of control. We are out of control. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. Therefore, I run, this is Paul, I run in such a way as not without aim. I know what I'm doing, he said. I'm trying to knock somebody out. I'm just not hitting in the air. I'm not just screaming and yelling and making a lot of noise. I box in such a way as not to beat the air. I'm not just having a good time at church and screaming and yelling and dancing and running. No. No, I'm here to do something. Amen. And I'm here to win. And I'm here to knock some lights out of demonic forces with the power of God Almighty that resides within me. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You are called to walk in the light as Jesus is the light. There can be no compromise. It is only by yielding to God that you can thrive and break through the darkness as light. It's time to shine from the inside out. Sandra's four CD series will give you nuggets of truth to stir up change in the depths of your being. Call or order online. It's time to shine. And for a gift of $24, we will send you this four message series. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Think about being the last generation. What if, and listen to me, this is very serious. We are the last generation. Jesus is going to come in my lifetime. The last generation. I have a story to tell. I have a testimony to get out. Everybody's waiting on it. We're the last. You know, in a, in, a, in a relay, I looked up some things about relay races. And if, and if you have a four-man team, you want to put your best one at the start and your best one at the end. You want to put your best at, at the start and you want to put your best at the end. We're parallel to what Israel did. I'm saying to you, there's nobody behind us. The first runner has gone. The first runner has gone. Now what are we trying to do? Become like him. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
Step up to be that person that the Lord has called us to be. To be Jesus walking on the face of this earth. We've had a lot of teaching. We're living in where the, the books that were hidden have been opened. We're, we're living in a time that the mysteries are coming forth. We're living in a time of these end days that things that other generations have not even seen. If you're running a race, and it's for so much distance, each racer sees something different. Are you with me? We don't see the same thing the first race saw. But they started. If they slowed down a little bit, then number two, the baton can be passed to number two. And they hope number two can catch up. Number two is seeing things that number one did not see. But he can ride on number one. Stay with me. Number three comes up. Maybe number three lost a little bit. Number two lost, and we were expecting number three to pick up. Number three is looking at something totally different than number one and number two did. But we're all going to the same place. And there is a prize to be won. And the intent of the first one is the same intent of the fourth one. The intent is no different. Made in his image to be like him. To show the world to have a family for God. To walk uprightly. To be God's man upon the earth. We all have the same intent. So number three comes along. The baton is passed. The number, number three has it. Number three, again, can ride on number one and number two. Can ride on number one and number two. But he doesn't see the same things. And the path is different. But number three, number three may be harder than number two and number one because number two and number three have something to build on that number one didn't have. You following me? Everybody with me? But we're running. So then you get to number four. Now number four is the last runner. They say the best to last. They say the very best to last so that we would win. And in that last runner, everything, the best that, it, that is, is there to have is given to that last runner. But he sees a different road. And one, two, and three. In order to win, he's got to ride on one, two, and three. He may have to pick up. They may have lost some space. They may have messed up. But inside of number four is the ability to conquer. Number four has the ability to take from one two, and three, even if they lost ground, right. number four has the ability to go for it because he's the best. He's the very best. Number four does not have anybody to give the baton to. We got to take it home. We got to take it home. That's who we are. That's exactly who this generation is. We're number four. There is no one for you to pass the baton to. Think about it. There's no one for you to pass the baton to. You're it. Don't make the mistakes number one made. 
Don't do what number two did. You carry it all the way. Because you can learn from one, two, and three. And God saved the best to last. Now, you, you, you got to hear what I'm saying. I'm not just talking. You're the last. You're the last. You're the last. What an awesome responsibility. Yet, how magnificent that God, can you believe that God thinks you're good enough to be put in the last group? And we sit here like a bunch of wimps. And God chose us to carry the last of the message. And not only should we carry it, by the time we run it, we should be showing it. Amen. We should be shining. There should be no question by the time we get there. Maybe two and three lost a little bit, but there's no question. Here we come. He knows what he put in us. Man, I wish I could get this through to you. You are the last. You're the last. We are the last generation. It is astounding. You need to think about it. We've got a whole, listen, we've got to get this thing right. We can't mess up. People are on their way to hell. We are the best and the last of God's lot to show forth his glory. But we're the crowd that's coming in. You just got to run that thing. And the shining of the Lord, his glory will be so upon you. It's amazing what he's going to let us do. Sarah, we're the last. We're the last. There's nobody, no one to pass anything to. So can't anybody mess up? Can't anybody cover up your mess up? So we can't mess up. We got to do this thing right. The whole cloud of witnesses are all up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're all around us. Come on. Come on. They're in this room. Come on. Come on. Cross the finish line. Win. God's empowering us. It's not about houses and cars and, and, and money. It's not about that. It, that doesn't matter. We're the last. There's nothing to leave. There's something to take. People to take with you. Lord, help them. Help us. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the fourth man. There's only four in the race. You're number four. And you're up. You're up. You're up. I know it's hard to, to grab hold of that truth because we've lived in this crazy little whatever, always thinking that Oh, everybody said that Jesus is coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. Amen. And I'm telling you that you 
are the last runner. And I'm telling you that God chose you for now. It's not a matter of how, how wonderful. Do you know that every idea that you think you have, God gives it to you? Every good idea. You think you're just smart enough? No, you're not. None of us. None of us. None of us. We can't even get ourselves out of a paper bag. You could not get out. You could not get out of a sack. The problem is you think you can. And because you think you can, you don't lean on him to get you out. So you mess up trying to get out. And you wear yourself out trying to get out. And he wanted just to open the thing up to start off with. And let you out. It's time to run. Can't afford to miss this. There's nobody to take that baton. The crowd that's gone before us wants us to do better than they did. Everything is at stake. Everything is at stake. Get with me. Everything is at stake on this last runner. Yes. On that last pass, if you're a football person or whatever, kick or whatever you do. You, everything is on it. Everything. You are handpicked by God to be here now. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what your body's trying to say to you. God picked you for now. And we have got to do it right. We've got thousands that are cheering us on. Thousands in the stands. Millions in the stand. We need to finish so that when we cross the finish line, the real crossing of what the Lord wants is the, not to be able to tell any difference between us and Jesus when we cross. Amen. Amen. That's why we've had the teachings we've had. That's why the, 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 the revelation knowledge is coming forth. That's why you're getting distracted because Satan knows you're the last runner. He wants to distract you. He wants to sidetrack you. He wants to get your attention somewhere else so that you won't focus on the finish line. There's no way to lose if we could get ourselves, get ourselves out of the way and realize that you have an assignment. You know, the problem with most of us sitting in here thinking, you know, it is true we're nobody, but we are somebody. Amen. Outside of the Lord, I'm nobody. But man, I'm somebody with Jesus. Amen. You are a force to be reckoned with. We don't have time for all the arguing and the fighting and the trying to prove your point and try to... Good grief, we're running a race and there's nobody to pass the, the baton to. You're it. You're it. Run the race to win. You're the best. You save the best to last. Now I can tell it's not sinking in. I can tell it's not because it's powerful. It's powerful. First of all, you have to accept that you're the last. You have to accept that we're in the end of the end of days. I'm saying that you are the last on the last generation on this earth to run in this race for the Lord God Almighty. That's what I'm saying. 
I'm saying he has handpicked you. I'm saying it over and over again. I've had to deal with this and think about it. You are handpicked by God to live now, to live in these days now. He put in you what's needed, what's needed. Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> The Lord's coming. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You are called to walk in the light, as Jesus is the light. There can be no compromise. It is only by yielding to God that you can thrive and break through the darkness as light. It's time to shine from the inside out. Sandra's four CD series will give you nuggets of truth to stir up change in the depths of your being. Call or order online. It's time to shine. And for a gift of $24, we will send you this four message series. Now you're going to get excited. This is part two that he saved the best to last. What does he save? Me and thee, honey. So that we can absolutely do our best for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our opportunity, and guess what? This is our time to shine. You ought to call in and get these, I promise you. They will bless you. I think there are four CDs in here, and you will be so blessed by them. Shine, honey, shine, and let Jesus be seen in your life everywhere. God is doing so much. I want to go ahead and remind you, write it on your calendar. We have a healing explosion, this uh, conference that's taking place here in Augusta, Georgia on March 1 and 2. And we would love for you to come be a part of it. So write it down somewhere. People come from all over the nation and we're so excited about it, different parts of the world. Why don't you come see God just show out? This is the year that God's showing out, I promise you, because we have such little time before he's coming back and I give him all the glory and I give him all the praise. Follow us on any kind of social media that you can and guess what? It's our people who are answering the telephone. So you just pick up that phone and you call and you'll talk to people here in the church who know how to pray for you. We're here for you. We love you. We care about you. And guess what again? We are the best. Jesus said the best till last. That's us, I promise you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You are called to walk in the light as Jesus is the light. There can be no compromise. It is only by yielding to God that you can thrive and break through the darkness as light. It's time to shine from the inside out. Sandra's four CD series will give you nuggets of truth to stir up change in the depths of your being. Call or order online. It's time to shine. And for a gift of $24, we will send you this four-message series.